You are listening to 90.7 WCLH, Wilkes University Radio, the home of Metal Mondays. And that metal coming to us from Ohio, the band is Axe Master. And on the phone with me right now is lead guitarist of Axe Master, Joe Sims. Joe, how are you today? Hey, everything's going great. Busy as hell, but going great. Definitely busy. Busy probably with this new release you have here. We just heard the title track from Crawling Chaos, which came out just this Friday. So what are you and the guys in Axe Master up to in terms of this new album and maybe even touring? Well, we've got something possibly in the works touring-wise that would be awesome if it works out. I really can't get into details because there's been no confirmation yet. Uh, working with a promoter to actually uh, be on tour with a legendary European band. But like I said, I don't want to go into any more detail because that's, you know, you don't say something until it's 100% and signatures are down on paper. But uh, we also just got done uh, video shooting, our first video from uh, from the album. Um, we're waiting on the film company to finish the editing, but that should be real quick. And um, just, <laughs> it's been really busy shooting that video, playing shows. Um, we also had a uh, double album that was a re-release of Axe Master stuff from 96 to, or I mean, sorry, 86 to 91. Um, that was, that's great. I, I haven't seen my stuff out on vinyl since 87. So that was pretty damn cool to see, see stuff out on vinyl again. Yeah. I'm always looking forward for bands to be releasing vinyl as I play them on my night show here on WCLH sometimes. But, Joe, I know you said you don't want to mention anything about an upcoming tour, uh, but based just on previous tours that you've done, I know you're on a German label, Pure Steel Records, uh, but right. we're here in, over in Wilkes-Barre, northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, based on past tours, have you ever been around here, or are you more likely to head on over to like Germany and Europe where you guys well, have a label? The one that I'm the one that I'm talking about would be would be U.S. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be one of these marathon things that you know where you're playing a hundred shows or something like that. It, would, it wouldn't be anything like that. But it, you know, it would it would definitely get us around to places we haven't played before. Um, we, to be honest, we have not played in Europe. Um, we. Our main fan base is in Europe, and we've had offers to go to Europe, but it's just it's just a matter of finances. You know, for a band like us, where the members still have day jobs, you know, I mean, it's difficult to, you know, front maybe $5,000 for a round trip for five people, you know. So, you know, that's something that we're, that we're definitely wanting to do. Like I said, we've had offers there. We've had offers in South America. Um, we just have to find one that, you know, this is a business, and we have to find one that makes sense financially, you know? Yeah. So I hope you get over there to Europe. And in terms of PA being neighbors with Ohio, what's the closest you've ever been to the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area? Oh, let's see. Well, you say you say it's in uh, eastern Pennsylvania. Yeah, northeastern. We actually got we actually got destroyed by a semi truck on the way home from Delaware in eastern Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we were playing Hollow Fest last year in uh, in Delaware, and um, we were driving back. A semi blasted us. <laughs> And then after seeing what happened later on with, uh, was it, uh, I forget the name of the band, but they had a similar thing happen and a bunch of, pe a bunch of people passed away. It kind of hit home, you know? Yeah, it, it happened in Florida. The band is escaping me right now, but it was a local Jane train to, uh, to Pittston. And we're, we're reaching Pittston here on WCLH. So yeah, that was definitely a, a tragic moment in the metal community. So I'm glad you guys made out all right on whatever road that was. I mean, I know you're saying it might have been close to northeastern PA. My thought 
Uh, my dad always mentions the uh, school kill road. He likes to call it the sure kill road, kind of heading towards Philadelphia, but maybe. I don't know if you, if you recall Wasn't exactly where. It wasn't far from Philadelphia. Yeah, well, Wasn't that might have been it there. then. Yeah. It was, uh, we were, it was uh, a red light at the bottom of a hill. Mm-hmm. And the semi just didn't stop. And just smashed us from behind. Well, once again, glad you're okay there, Joe. On uh, We're here, 90.7 WCLH, Wilkes University Radio, and I'm on the phone with Joe Sims, lead guitarist of Axe Master. They have their latest release, Crawling Chaos, available now. Joe, I wanted to ask you about the inspiration behind Crawling Chaos. Obviously, it, it correlated well with the album artwork so what was the inspiration behind that visually and even just as a song and album itself well jeff uh, our singer jeff mcgraw writes all the lyrics but i know for a fact that this song was a definite um it definitely was influenced majorly by hp lovecraft and his cthulhu character uh which is what is depicted on the album cover and um, he, you know, he's he's a big fan of of books and literature and things, and he uh, he just felt it had that creepy, eerie feel, and wanted to wanted to use a Lovecraft inspired theme. Yeah, definitely an old school looking record. The album artwork, I'm very much a fan of it. I don't know if you're a fan of George Lynch at all, but he did an album with Michael Sweet called Sweet and Lynch. And the mood of the album artwork kind of reminded me of theirs from 2014, Only to Rise, but with the addition of Chaos, of course, Crawling Chaos in Axe Master's release there. And uh, definitely a great album cover. Would you say that was one of your favorites you've ever had? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the last album cover was oh my god, that was a nightmare. But this one went went great. Jeff, uh, same guy, commissioned uh, Noel Puente, I believe is how you pronounce his name, from Spain, to do the uh, to do the album cover, and he he just did an unbelievable job. I we have gotten so many positive comments on that album cover. You know, and it almost seems like back in the day when it used to, you know, everybody bought vinyl, and sometimes you saw the kids buy albums just because it had a really cool album cover. Yeah, it almost seems kind of like those days, that you know, for listening to what people are saying about it. Yeah, I've definitely heard that from a lot of people back when we actually went to record stores that uh, a big factor was actually the album cover saying, hey, this looks pretty cool, let's pick this and and look at it. Uh, But I'm glad uh, I've just, we've had Axe Master here at WCLH for for years, and when I came in three years ago, you guys were already playing. So that was my introduction to you guys, and then it's great to still be involved with you, Joe, and, and talk about your latest release. Crawl was that chaos. right before? Was that right before, or right after Overture to Madness came out? That that I talked to you last. Well, that wasn't me. That might have been. Oh, that's right. Our old that's metal right. director, Rasha Shaker. So uh, I think her name was Ellie Bear. She went by Ellie Bear here on the air. Um, so I never got to talk to you, but I definitely admired your music that she did program here in the station. And now it's my role here as metal director to put new songs such as from Crawling Chaos. Um, so speaking of Crawling Chaos, uh, once again on the phone with me is Joe Sims, lead guitarist of Axe Master. Uh, your guitar playing, this was a, a different approach, if I read everything correctly. You had uh, another guitarist added into the band, so was this the first record with two guitarists and if it was how was that dynamic in terms of you previously just yeah. by yourself this was the first time in the history of axe master there's ever been two lead players now jeff our singer played some rhythm guitar at times but um we uh the guy's name is damon bennett and he is he is a tremendous guitar player uh, he he just he just blows my mind with some of the stuff he comes up with. 
and he's he's as cool of a guy as he's as as a good player, and because a lot of these, you see, he came in once these songs were already written. Basically, he we let it, you know he came up with some cool additions that we put in, but yeah, you know, I wanted to I wanted to give him more leads and say you know hey take this take this take this because he's such a great player. It just it was just kind of like I had leads written for a lot of the stuff that I really liked. I was like, oh man, you know, I don't want to give all the leads away, but he's really cool about it. He he just he just he's like fine, you know, whatever I play, I play. You know, no ego, no attitude. Great guy to work with. Very good to hear. And, and it's nice to be able to do dual stuff too live. Yeah, that's a major thing. Yeah, definitely a different dynamic there. And uh, I know, like, Overkill back in the early 90s, they started with the two guitars. And just speaking from a guitar standpoint, um, how big of a change is that? It's really a good change. I mean, I, number one, you, you're able to play the songs live more complete. Um, back in back when the band was first active between like nine or uh, eighty five and ninety two or three, most of the songs that I wrote were wrote were written for one guitar. But since then, I've learned a lot about music, about music and theory and things like that. And I've started more and more in my writing, layering guitars and two guitars doing two different things, which sounds great in the studio, but. It, you cannot capture it live with one guitar. Uh, you, it's going to be missing something, and and that was one of the main reasons that we decided to add another player was so that we could play the stuff live and make it sound the way it's supposed to sound. And um, not only, I mean, and it went way beyond that. I mean, he's he's done a whole lot more for this band than just making stuff sound more complete live. I mean, he's added a lot. So it was one of the best moves we ever made with that, Dave. Yeah, and I definitely enjoy the dual guitars on Crawling Chaos. And though you do have the two guitarists, lead guitarists anyway now, in Axe Master, um, judging like on your bio on axemasterofficial.com, I kind of liked you to say uh, Jeff Waters of Annihilator, Kurt Vanderhoof of Metal Church, oh. be it that you guys, like you got that thrash sound, but also those guys have been with the band and been the core of the band as guitarists and have been the ones that have stayed with the band throughout its whole discography. discography. Yeah. Um, so you being the main guy, would you consider yourself the main guy behind Axe Master? And if you do, um, how how would you say a guitarist influences the direction of a band as opposed to maybe what people usually perceive as the main guy behind the band, which is a singer? Well, I didn't start out like trying to be the main guy. Um, basically, I it started by me in high school having a bunch of original songs and wanting to put a band together to play them. Um, and that's how Axe Master actually got started. But as time went on, I wrote I wrote probably 90% of the old music and 70 or 60% of the lyrics. And I got involved doing all the promotion and, you know, doing all the marketing and all that. So my name and my face has kind of got associated with the band and um, as, as the main guy. And plus, I'm the only one that's been on every album that the band's ever done. It, anytime there has been an active Axe Master, I've been in it. And really, with the guys that I'm with now, I try not to act like the main guy because everybody, everybody does their part, and everybody does uh, basically more than their part. You know, it's it's really it's a group dynamic. It's not like one member with playing with a bunch of guys. I mean, this is really truly a band. It's not a glorified solo project. And, you know, I mean, I still do a lot. You know, most of the writing, at least the music, 
uh, Damon's going to be adding a lot of his own stuff on the album we do next. But, um, you know, I, I really, everybody says, well, you're the leader of the band. Well, you know, I try not to act like that because everybody is, is as important as everybody else, you know, and I like more of a de- uh, democratic type of structure in a band. I like that a lot better than being me being the guy that is responsible for everything and has to okay everything. And uh, it, that's, it's just too, that's just too much to try to try to do that completely, do all the promotion, all the writing. Plus I, 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 per, you know, I do production for the band and all that. Shit, after a while, I mean, there's only 24 hours in the day, you know, and to be able to have a whole band that everybody pitches in and does different things is such a relief because that's not always been the case in bands I've been in. Definitely. Well, I admire your outlook on your band and how you guys work together. Uh, so once again, to anyone just tuning in, I am on the phone with Joe Sims, lead guitarist of Axe Master. Um, so kind of wrapping this up a bit, I'd like to say I'm more of a new fan to Axe Master because uh, I, I was sent this Crawling Chaos and all the great songs on that. But it was kind of hard for me to find some of your older stuff, but I've been getting to it, but I haven't listened to it. Um, so... From my perspective, I'd like to know, and for anyone listening who has never heard of Axe Master, of course the music speaks for itself, and you guys have a lot of classic influences, and we've been hearing that here on WCLH uh, before you call, and I'll be playing it after. Uh, but I'd like to know, and maybe anyone else listening, uh, what is Axe Master's goal, message, or attitude as a band? And I know you kind of touched on this when you when you described your part in the band, but... Is there an overall attitude that you guys have when it comes to releasing your music? Well, it, it comes down to that everybody, the main, the one thing that everybody is, con- well, no, I take that back. Two things that everybody's concerned about is one, we just want to make the best music and the best releases, the best show, whatever that we can possibly do. It doesn't matter who gets the attention in a particular spot or who, who, um, gets their name out more than another who writes what, whatever. We don't care. I mean, we everybody in this band has been doing this a long time, and we've all had our share of successes and failures throughout, you know, decades in music. And we are simply in this right now because we love what we do. And we just want to make the best music and play the best shows possible and nobody really cares who gets more credit than the other person. It, you know, as long as the band is getting the credit, that's what everybody cares about. There, nobody is out for themselves ego-wise, which is amazing in a, <laughs> in a rock band. Let me tell you what. And uh, the other thing that we're all about, we've always been all about the fans. Um, we're always approachable, whether it be at, at shows or over the internet or whatever. You know, anybody want to talk? Anybody want to ask us anything or know about anything? We're always there to talk to people because, you know, we we came through this. You know, what I think a lot of musicians forget is they started out as fans. You know, and they lose they lose sight of how much sometimes it means to a fan for a band to be approachable and we'll sit there and BS with them, you know? And, um, we, to me, that's one of the greatest things about being in a band. I've made so many good friends and met so many cool people. It, it, we, we definitely are always open to do, you know, to talk to anybody. And, uh, that's, that's a, that's a big deal to us too. Yeah, that's definitely great to hear. And, for myself to relate to that, I was over in Allentown a couple months ago to see Raven and those guys, like Mark and John Gallagher, were just walking around the venue before hanging out, and I'm sure that's the same kind of atmosphere that you guys uh, in Axe Master do with your fans. And I really think that the bands who do not do that, who who think they're above 
doing that for some strange reason. I mean, we entertain people. We're not out fighting fires and saving little children from burning buildings. I mean, those are the true heroes. You know, we entertain people, and we have a talent, and we've worked, a, we've worked hard at it, but that doesn't make us better people than anybody else. You know, and, and bands that have that attitude, to me, I think are missing out, because to me, half of, half of the fun of the whole thing is the relationships you make, the people you meet. It's, it's a blast to me. I love it. And, you know, I think it's a real shame that maybe not so much now as maybe like back in the 70s and somewhat in the 80s, but... Yeah, I keep hearing stories about, you know, oh, God, you you know, it's so great that you'll talk to anybody. I'm like, why? You know, I mean, I'm just a guy, you know, who happens to be able to write songs, play guitar, and work my butt off to get where I am, you know? But that doesn't make me any better than you are. I'm a fan, too, you know? I I love meeting, meeting bands just the same way you love meeting bands. Of course, definitely, I agree. Um, we're all just fans. Uh, that's pretty much why I'm here on the radio. And that's uh, 90.7 WCLH in Wilkes-Barre. So, Joe from Axe Master, in case anyone's just tuning in, um, where can people find everything and anything Axe Master? Well, number one, people in the state uh, should get the stuff from a state's um, from somewhere in the states, because if I've had we've had a couple people say, you know, well, it costs so much money to get your CD from Pure Steel. It's like, yeah, that's because they're the po- the shipping from Germany to the United States. You know, yeah, it, that is expensive. Um, you know, you can get it on uh, the web store and our on our website. That's where you can get the most Axe Master stuff. There's tons of merchandise, old releases. Different. He, he, I think Jeff's even selling on there the original lyric sheets from Overture to Madness. You know, like handwritten lyrics and stuff. So, you know, you can you can find about anything at our web store at www.axmasterofficial.com. But right now, I know that at least Crawling Chaos is being sold at uh, Walmart.com, Amazon. You can always find our stuff on eBay, mm-hmm. um, but that's where I would get it is a is a North American based distributor because you start mess you know people from the states start messing with Europe or vice versa, it, you know the cost goes way up. Yeah, so you heard it here on WCLH. Get it in the great USA. So Joe. I'm going to take us out with one of my favorite tracks off of Crawling Chaos, which is Alder Roth. And uh, to explain why it was my favorite, just going through the tracks initially, the opening riff, the triplets, kind of reminded me of an Iron Maiden-ish uh, yeah. kind of feel because of the triplets. But then it, with the first change up there, it took a different turn. And from what I've heard, it seemed to take an Axe Master turn and terms of like the chord progression so do you have any word on this song specifically before we end this and i play alder roth it's actually one of my faves too um that that song really got us back to our roots because the band the band originally was almost like a kind of black sabbath ronnie james dio iron maiden mixture and then as i got progressed in music and then got to Overture, I started really getting into thrash as well, so there was a lot of thrash involved in Overture to Madness, but this song is really back to what we were doing in 1987, 88, that type of thing with the, you know, the crunch and the chords being, instead of being crunchy, being played just straight out. It yeah, if you like if you like traditional '80s heavy metal, such as like a New Album band like Iron Maiden or Ronnie James Dio or somebody, this you will dig this song. Definitely, and I definitely digged it. So that's what we're gonna hear. 
coming up next. But first, I'd like to thank you, Joe, for being a part of Metal Massacre here on WCLH. Any last words? Well, like I said, uh, you can you can uh, check out our website at axemasterofficial dot com. From that website, you can get to our Facebook, our YouTube channel, which is kind of cool because there's some stuff there from like nineteen eighty five, the new kind of vintage stuff. And our vi- our new video will be on there probably uh, definitely within the next few weeks. Um, you know, but feel free to get in touch with us. It, it might take me a while to return all mail, but I always return all mail. That's the way I've been ever since I started this back in the middle 80s. Okay, sounds great. I'll check it out. And anyone in Wilkesbury out there will be checking it out, listening to Metal Mondays here. So once again, thank you, Joe Sims from Axe Master. And up next, I have... From their latest release, Crawling Chaos, it is Alder Roth. Keep it locked right here on 90.7 WCLH.